Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronze Cave. We're back with another live show. In this one, oh, am I kind of looks like I'm kind of laggy here a little bit. Hopefully, it looks and sounds okay. In this one, it's mostly just a mail call, mostly just an excuse to go live. We'll see how many people jump in, if anybody. It's a weird time, four o'clock on a on a Thursday. That's Pacific time where I'm at. So. No big deal if nobody jumps in. I didn't announce it, just like the last one I did. Uh, hey, we got GT Key Comic in the house. Thanks for joining. I'm trying to figure out why I look a little, uh, little frame, low frame rate. I might mess around with that since I'm not really got a lot of people in here for a second. Um, let's see what we can break. Hmm. Yes, I know my webcam is using a lot of CPU. Thanks for telling me that, computer. So yeah, this isn't necessarily going to be like the craziest stream ever. Um, but I do want to figure this out. I'm in 1080. My camera's coming in at 4K. That's normal. I've resized it to 1080. Hmm. That kind of fix it. Might be a little bit better. I don't know. All right. Well, anyways, um, yeah, absolutely, man. Go for it. Uh, remember, I am not the spec guy. I'm not like the, you know, here's what you should buy. Here's what you shouldn't. Well, I am what I am the guy who says what you shouldn't buy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, feel free, man. Absolutely. Always got time for a few of those. That's weird. It's like kind of warm here today. And so like things are like heating up and expanding and I'm getting all kinds of like weird popping sounds like windows are popping and stuff. It's freaky. Um, let me see how this looks on my phone real fast while I'm waiting for GT to get his spec questions in. As long as you're cool with me not really having the best answer necessarily sure yeah i don't mind i've got about five or six things to open um we'll go from there so real fast uh i know there's like nobody in here but hey there's four people in here and from what it shows me on my end i am four subscribers away from three thousand that's been kind of a cool little benchmark i've been trying to strive to um it's been an incredible journey up to this point. You know, it's cool. Once I get to 3,000, I can just retire. It's done. Oh, no, wait. I got to keep going. Uh, <laughs> I, sh I should say I get to keep going. <laughs> but, yeah, that's 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 a fun little thing. Uh, do you know why first appearances of Punchline are moving? Uh, I haven't noticed that they're moving. Um Man, that that 89 first appearance. This is that total. This is that thing where I own Hell Arisen 3. I own a couple copies. I used to have a few more. Um, I sold some. So the, full disclosure, I own the book I'm about to say I think is the better book. But I I mean, I didn't have those books when the, the big spec was happening on Punchline. And I, I went for Hell Arisen 3 because 89 is just not a good book. Uh, that's in my opinion, my personal opinion. That is a really weak cameo. But anyways, uh, I don't know if, if there's anything going on. I mean, there's... Let's see, what would cause that to move? Um, there's been kind of a steady amount of punchline. Oh, there was, there was something about her getting her own animated show. It was totally a rumor. I don't think it was any kind of like confirmed thing whatsoever. So, you know, I'm going to get to open some of these boxes. Um, I will say, if you followed along on my 10 comics that I'm buying in 2022, um, I guess I should highlight your question. Okay, so I'll recap that. I don't know officially why. I know there were some rumors about her getting her own series. Um, 
there was there was some conversation I saw about punchline in a Discord server. I think it was just casting talk, but maybe maybe they were talking about it in response to something they saw. So short answer, I don't know. Uh, not firm anyway. So anyways, if you followed along with one of my, actually, it's, it's my most popular video now. It's kind of crazy. It's like at almost 9,000 views. I did my top 10 comic books that I'm buying in 2022. And it, I, I didn't buy these today. They didn't come in today. I've been sitting on these for a while. Um, but I just wanted to update. So I'm at four of those 10 books down. Uh, I'm not trying to get a book a month. It just kind of worked out that way. And the big one I'll show, I don't think I showed this on stream. I shared this in my Discord server, but I did get a copy of Uncanny X-Men 101. The the seller, um, I had some issues with the seller on eBay, but whatever. I still think I got a great price on it. The other book is, uh, this is the newer one that came in, Uncanny X-Men 121, First Full Alpha Flight. So those are two books on my list from X-Men Run. And neither is in super high condition. Although this one, this one I'm really excited to see what Turlock Comics can do. There's some kind of discoloration on the bottom. And I think I'm going to try out, you know, something with them on that UV whitening process that they talked about on my live stream with them. Uh, that should be pretty cool. So I'm excited to try that out. Uh, GT, did you have another question related to, to Punchline or, or something? I'm down, dude. But anyways, I'm, I am four subscribers away from 3,000, which is so cool. And I've done all that without asking you guys to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, oh, man. I'm out of the loop on this. So, um, so I defer... It looks like Dollar, uh, who, who is... I think he's still... I think he's still part of like the Tales from the Flipside crew. Uh, apologize if, if I'm wrong about that, but Rich from from that group, at least that's that was what he was known for uh, on his Instagram. Anyway, he point he posted some really cool analysis um, of that character's first appearance, and um, what did he come up with that I really thought was I can't remember the issue. I haven't really like looked into it. It's not a character I'm going to go out and just like panic buy or something um sorry i get tickles in my nose allergy season starting early um i know he i guess i just need to go to his ig so uh go follow him on on ig too uh oh because it starts with an underscore is that why pretty sure it starts with an underscore Dollar. Oh, it's like a freaking one in there too. Arr. Hard to find, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, what's up, frightfully horrible? Uh, so yeah, yeah no, it's all cool. GT comic. I, I see your comment. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so. Most of my books I buy, most of my books, I'd say it's pretty even actually. I So for the modern stuff, I do most of my FOC purchases through a combination of stores. I'll use economics and comics. I'll use things from another world and I'll use uh, dangerouswaterscomics.com. Uh, kind of depends. It depends on on what I'm looking for, how much I believe in it. Bro, how come I cannot find you? Uh, that's going to bother me. I don't like Instagrams kind of more or less like their, their interface for like finding people really bugs me. I'm now like looking for stuff I know he would have liked. I, but anyways, there's an issue where um, that character appears in like a video game, but you see him playing the video game and it's a little short story about him. It's a Strange Academy tie-in book. Um, 
and I just forgot the name of it, but he did a really good job laying it out. And he does his research on books. Like if he says that's the book, I, I believe it. Um, but yeah, so the, the, for FOC books, that's where I get them. Let me highlight your question real fast. So again, that was that was GT GT Key Comic asking about the the first appearance of Howie. My opinion is it's yeah, it, you know, like you said, it's a right mess. And I think it's going to continue to be a right mess. But um, I I trust the research that Dollar did. Uh, Rich again is his name. Um, frightfully horrible asks, you know, where do I get my new books? So the the FOC books, those are where I get them. Um, I pick up stuff on whatnot. You know, you kind of, it's luck of the draw, right? Like, I will follow an auction. Like, the last few whatnots I bought from for comics were from uh, Dean Metzger's. Uh, he's Dean Metzger here on YouTube, and he's the Dean of Comics on IG, and he's DW Metzger on, on whatnot. Uh, and I bought some Star Wars stuff from him recently. Um, it's kind of, most of my stuff on whatnot it's like rarely does stuff come up that I'm like interested in for my PC occasionally. Like I bought a, an X-Men book for my X-Men run from Skeff recently. He just happened to throw it up and no one was bidding on it. I was like, shit, yeah, I'll take that. Um, but I do a lot of eBay like monitoring. Um, so I have save searches on eBay and if something comes up, you know, looks, looks promising. I'll throw it on there. Mm, this is pretty clean. So here's my first unboxing from today from eBay. And it's just in a nasty bag and board, but whatever, I'll take it out. Hey, what's up? Michael Hinton's in the house. Another another place I buy comic books from, Hoodwood Comics over on IG. Uh, but yeah, this was the first book I grabbed. This was cheapest I've seen it on eBay. Uh, Babylon 5, number one. I'm a big Babylon 5 fan. And they're rebooting the series. I'm not buying this book to spec on or anything like that. I just want to get it now. I've been kind of hunting for it. I don't, if you guys follow along, I don't get to hunt um, raw comic books that often in the wild. I wish I did, um, but that's just how it goes. And so, I, you know, eBay is kind of my friend, IG sellers um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Okay, there's some, no, that's the, that's the page below it. Yeah, there's, Man, this thing looked clean when I was looking at it, and it still looks pretty clean. I don't think that breaks color. Hmm. That's cool. Um, but yeah, Babylon 5, number one. Nice looking copy, as it turns out. Man, pretty terrible art inside, though. But there's the front page. It's kind of cool. I mean, that that the ship art looks cool there. It's the characters inside. Here, I'll show what I'm talking about. Whatever. Um, just like bad adaptation artwork, right? Like, yeah, you know, not great. Um, anyways, that's cool. But yeah, I got my two big X-Men keys. I picked up somewhat kind of sort of recently. Those are my like, you know, big, big shops. Hey, what's up? How's it going, Trev, the shipping guru? Yeah, it's a really good community. Um, it polices itself too, which is nice. Uh, you don't really have to worry about things as much. I think this is from eBay as well. Can't remember. Uh, that book was shipped okay. Gemini Mailer. This is my my packaging review. Shipped in a Gemini Mailer with um, just taped down with painter's tape. I don't really like taping down the book to the the Gemini personally. Uh, depends. Single book, I usually put in some other stuff there as filler. Um, but I, I just like to have a clean release. I like to pack it in there firmly, but not too hard. That's what she said. This is in one of those like U-line shippers. And then we got a little bubble wrap envelope type thing here. All right, so far I like this. I can't remember the person's name was on the front. And I can't remember, there's like two kind of one-off books I got on here that are both kind of of a theme. And again, yeah, I just fo followed searches for these books and just, you know, they happen to pop up. Um, I 
Got 12 in here. It's not too bad for a pop-up. All right. I like this. They did the backing board sandwich. I'm a big fan of that. You know, especially for books that aren't aren't necessarily hundred dollar keys or something, right? It's good enough. Okay. Okay, so this is of a theme here. Once you see the first book, you'll understand the theme. Power Girl miniseries number one. Pretty cool. Kind of I one of the books on my top ten to buy in 2022 was Showcase 97. Uh, so this kind of goes along with that. This isn't in, you know, 9-8 shape or anything like that, but it doesn't need to be. This is, you know, a run filler for me, essentially. I passed up an opportunity to buy that whole miniseries raw for like 15 bucks. I was just at a shop where I was, you know, I had too much other stuff in my hands and I was like, ah, I can't do it. I've been regretting that ever since. So this is the other one I think is just kind of, kind of a random book that is of a theme for me. Oh man, you taped where the pull thing is on this utility mailer. So I'm never a fan of stuff like this being used for shipping comics personally. Um, that uh, yeah, that X Men book did not get shipped well. Somehow it came through okay. Um, do I collect any trades or omnibus? No, I do not do that. Uh, I used to. Yeah, I, I'm, I've got a lot of the Power Girl stuff. I have like the whole standalone series she did. I have the whole run, including a couple of the variants. Um, like I have the number one Adam Hughes signed in a 9-8. I have the number two Adam Hughes. I have the number one Amanda Connor. I have the number... 27 Warren Lou's first cover in a 98, not signed, but in a 98. Uh, so I love collecting Power Girl. I got that Showcase 97. I got Showcase 98. I'm going to try to pick up the rest of the Power Girl miniseries. Um, it's most of her keys. I have her first appearance. I have her second appearance. Um, hey, man, I'm glad, glad you're able to catch a stream as well. Dealing with some rough packaging here on this one. Just like, like this tape. Like, cool. You've got tape all the way around there. Well, the, the thing to rip open the package runs the tape and neat. Now, now what am I going to do? Like, and, and it's not like a super sturdy thing, so I can't like bend it. Just makes for an awkward unboxing on stream. Um, it's not that I don't like Trader Omnibus. Uh, for, for a while, you know, I think like a lot of collectors, I got out of comic book collecting for a while couple times and the first time i said hey i'll just buy trades and that's it, the the idea was i'm tired of having too many floppy standard comic books uh raw copies whatever you want to call them i, I just thought i had too many um what's this my invoice okay yeah so what is this this is okay yeah yeah um and so I started getting trades and not really omnibus, but trades. I don't omnibus weren't really a big thing back then, or at least I didn't see them anywhere. What the fuck is going on here? So you have like an extra thing taped to the outside? Is there any in there? Oh, what the fuck? <sighs> um oh cool. I gotta use my knife near the comic book that I don't know exactly where it's at in there. Um, <laughs> so this is packaging review 101. Okay, so I have issue number two of this signed by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, uh, raw, and I just wanted to grab the number one Harley Quinn and Power Girl. Speaking of, of I love collecting Power Girl, there we go. <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, so I don't have anything against trade and omnibus, I'm kind of like talking in chunks here. Um, the, the only thing is that it just takes up just as much room as raws, in my opinion, almost you know, a little bit less. Um, okay, this is from David Nakayama himself. If you don't know, David Nakayama launched a store. Um, really surprising. I'm not like going to show the front because it has my address on it and stuff. If you want to send me something, you can message me. That's fine. I just don't like to broadcast it. But like he clearly is using like an eight and a half by 11 printer, cutting it out, taping it. I mean, that's what I do. It's just when you see it from a store, you kind of expect it to be a little bit different, I guess. 
not a knock against him. That's totally fine. Um, yeah, but I think like the whole. Um, okay, so you got a little certificate of authenticity there. The whole like collecting trades and omnibus thing. I know it's very popular. I don't like reading, especially omnibus. They're so big. They're so big. I don't like to hold them. Uh, so I read digital. That's most of the reading I do is digital. Uh, I'm I am far sighted, so I see really well far away. A lot of people don't really realize what that means. I see really well far away. I have no problems, you know, shooting, playing sports, doing all the things I do. Right. Uh, I do have problems reading <laughs> things that are close up, and most people these days are near sighted. Um, so it's kind of unusual, and I'm extremely far sighted, meaning I have a really hard time reading close up, especially small print. And so reading digital on my tablet, it's nice because I can, you know, pinch to zoom and everything, zoom into anything I want to. The On Comixology, the di the guided view is really nice because it goes panel by panel. You don't have to, like, manually zoom into every panel or whatever. There's some other nice apps, too, by the way. It's not like they're the only show in town. Uh, and they they released a shitty update I did a video about, too. But I like them still. Um, you know, I read them there. So this is cool. This is cool. This is a second printing, technically, but that's the only version for David Nakayama's cover for Death of Doctor Strange first. Um, uh, um, Lyra Bloodstone? Lyra Bloodstone. Uh, and it is signed with the COA there. That's pretty cool. Those are available. They were available at a really good price at his store, so that's awesome. Um... Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's some, so I have some, a lot of mine are in storage, but I had so many like physical books and I don't mean comic books. I mean like books that I just got tired of it. Um, make sure that's not on camera there. So this is from Midtown and this is my last uh, comic book unboxing. <laughs> So uh, the whole reason for this stream, if you guys are wondering, I am going out of town this weekend. Um, my, basically, my wife's grandmother uh, has some medical stuff going on. That is the Copper Age Babes story, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Um, but we're, we're going to be out of town uh, for the weekend, uh, spending time with family. It'll be good. Uh, to see for like our daughter to see some family she hasn't met because uh, of COVID and all that stuff and um, see some some family she hasn't seen for a while. So that'll be good. Um, but I will be away from recording or being able to make videos. So that's just something I have going on. And so I wanted to go live and kind of just get something else out there besides the video I did. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Okay, so what did I do? I got, because I think this is, you know, okay, so this is the insight, right? I don't do spec videos, but if you watch what I buy, you kind of might figure out what I spec on. Uh, I picked up some copies of First Appearance of Night Gwen. Speaking of David Nakayama, that's a David Nakayama cover. So I got three copies of that. I already had one that I picked up, so I have four now. Um, she's kind of been... I won't say heavily featured in the whole Gwenverse thing, but she's been a, a part of it, right? So I got that. Um, they had the Matina, or sorry, Francesco Mana variant for Venom number one. I thought that was pretty cool. It was on sale. So I grabbed that. A couple bucks or something. Um this is the, the Del Auto for Venom, number one. Thought that was cool. Again, it was it was heavily discounted. And then why did I order from Midtown at this fortuitous time? Well, there was a whole bunch of these available. I think they did one per customer on these, so I got some of these. A, B, and C covers. So, yeah. Got some Ben Riley's, and then okay, I can show this. I do these red light district, uh, red light risque uh, auctions on whatnot. So got that for one of those. Again, it was it was a good deal, and I like to have a variety of content for those shows. So 
there's that. So that was a cool little pickup. Mostly spec buys. Um, well, all spec buys, actually. <laughs> Stocking up for whatnot auctions, that kind of stuff. By the way, speaking of whatnot, I am going to do a whatnot auction tonight. I'm probably going live at 10 p.m. It's going to be a little bit of the the not not risque as in like nude covers, but risque as in like sexy covers, basically. A little bit of that because I was planning on doing one of those shows. I'm going to do a huge one of those, not this Friday, but next Friday. I'm going to have a big show like that with lots of nude covers and stuff um, for people because that was really popular last time I did it. And then I'm also going to do uh, tonight just some of those sexy covers. And then also I'm going to do some keys. So I've got stacks I'm working on back here. And you can see some comics back here I've been working on. Um, so then this is one of my packs I have coming from Star Set on whatnot. Speaking of whatnot, oh, that is cool. So um, I picked up a pack of Topps Chrome. Star Wars cards from him. And I'm doing these mostly for giveaways on whatnot is why I'm picking it up. Um, but he gave me an X-Men pack. So we got Psylocke. Got the Danger Room Archangel. Jean Grey. Blob. Bishop. Pretty good pack, really. Mutant Liberation Front. Has a lot of named character cards that are you know popular characters. And then... For the tops, Chrome had some singles. The tops, Chrome. Those are all Chrome cards. It's pretty cool. And he just threw in a couple singles. It looks like on this one, Mando. And then uh, from another giveaway thing he did, um, my first Hollow from uh, which series was this? This was the '92 Marvel cards. Got Venom. That's really funky. Love that. Love that. And then uh, since I bought the pack, I actually won the, the big giveaway of the night. Uh, even though I only bought one pack and people were buying like 10 packs, he did the spin and it was right after I think I kind of bounced off the stream. Um, got a signed uh, Mortis Father. So signed by the actor. And that's from, again, Star Wars Tops Chrome. And that is 13 of 25. So that's really cool. I don't know if you can see the 13 of 25 down there very well, but yeah, signed by that actor. That's really neat. So most of these things, um, with one or two exceptions, are going to go in as giveaways or like... Oh, sorry, there's more cards. I don't know what I was thinking here. I, there's a, another Topps Chrome. Um, this was a, this is one of the chase cards, one of the green border. Like I think those are basically like parallels or something, and that's 27 of 50. Um, more Mando action. Little uh, little action there from Ben Solo using the Force. Uh, show off the other ones here. We got pretty cards. Doing my best not to get fingerprints on them. Her character was really fun in Mando. And I got a blue chase card in one of those as well. That is from uh, Solo, Star Wars film. This is one of the Star Wars Visions cards. The camera doesn't want to focus on that too well, but that's the duel. Um, got a Rebels card. And save him for last. Um, Han fighting Beckett from Solo. And then, who doesn't love a little Grogu? Uh, Grogu on the Seeing Stone. That's cool. Cool pack. I don't know why I was like, I'm done. Like, oh, no, there's more. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are mostly going to be for giveaways on my whatnot. Not even really giveaways, just like... Because I don't think giveaways on whatnot really matter as much. I'm not going to do very many of them. So they're more like, hey, you bought some stuff. I'm going to throw this in. Uh, it's because it's an easy thing I can throw in without adding any um, weight to the package, really. So I think that's a fun way to do it. A couple of these will stay in the personal collection, but most of them are giveaways. And I've got a whole stack of other giveaway 
cards I've got ready to go to. So I just kind of was stocking up. And he does these awesome card auctions. So definitely, uh, if you like cards, go consider doing you know card breaks over there for the the nerdy cards. I know he has new stuff coming in too. Uh, yes, definitely life things, Rick James. Fright for the Horrible wants to know, why is Gwen so popular? Is she actually a good written character with good stories? Or is she just a younger, cool costume spider person? So my exposure to uh, Ghost Spider, Spider Gwen, whatever you want to call her, was pretty limited. I wasn't really reading comics at the time that her character was big in the Marvel Universe. I'd, I'd kind of taken a break. And so what I did was... Um, I saw Into the Spider-Verse. And I thought her character was really cool in that movie. I thought she was like a really cool balance to Miles. And that movie made me appreciate Miles more, too. I wasn't really familiar with Miles. Uh, you know, and again, that was when that movie came out, which has been a few years now. And, and I've, I'm a little more caught up. I went back and read some of the books and stuff. Um, but yeah. Hey, what's up? Good evening, Gabriel. How's it going? No, no Night Brother cards. Comic Toby, unfortunately. No night, no uh, night brothers. Um, but I'm sure they have some, and you can definitely go check it out. So uh, let's see what else do we got going on that I can talk about. Um, I bought a whole bunch of autograph comics. Shared this on my IG. I'm gonna start doing uh, some mystery boxes for the first time because they're so popular and whatnot. And I'm not doing like here's five comic books. Good luck. I'm doing like big ass mystery boxes like. I have to kind of double check. They've changed some of the rules about mystery boxes. But um, I'm probably going to do like, here's your choice of a 9-8 slab, or maybe I'll have a, a mystery slab. Or like, you know, maybe if it's not a 9-8 slab, but it's kind of like a $100 slab, you know, some on the lower side, some on the higher side. And then some big slabs, and you can get a raffle ticket to pick like, you know, like a G.I. Joe one nine six newsstand or or whatever you get a chance to pick out um, your slab from that. Like if you get one of the raffle tickets inside the boxes, I'm only going to do like 10 boxes probably. And then a whole bunch of cool comic books boxes and each, each box of raw comic books, I'm going to have autographed comics, exclusives, uh, incentives, um, variant covers, um, and then some random comics too. So, you know, each of those will be kind of fun. So I bought a whole bunch of, of signed comic books and I'm only putting in the ones that have the COAs with them. Uh, cause this is from a comic book store where for the most part, what they did is they bought out the inventory of this huge shop called comics unlimited that was in Oregon. And they had tons and tons and tons of signings over the years and they bought out their inventory. <laughs> um, so there was just some cool stuff in there. Um, and I still have to kind of like decipher. So this is the stuff I'm keeping. It doesn't have a COA with it. Everything else does. Uh, this is, a. Uh, um, I don't know if it's NYX. I think every, I, I've, I'm pretty sure it's NYX, but NYX number two, which is the first appearance, but that's signed. I don't even know who signed that. Um, Casada and Middleton were on this book. I don't think that's a Casada signature. I actually don't know what his looks like up the top of my head, but for the price, I was like, why not? Um, Who would who would this be? Let's look at the creative team here. But I also picked up a third appearance of Laura Kinney, X23. Why is there no the credits at the end? What's going on here? Wow, there's like no. No credits page? I thought it could be like the inker or something. Anyways, I don't know that signature. So, um, yeah, dude. So, uh, this is a, a Wagner signed mage book that was just in there. Yeah. So, I, I actually. One second. Hang on. Yeah, I'll show off. I'll show off what I got. So this one's signed by Eric Larson. And like these are the COAs from that Comics Unlimited shop. You can see there. Um, 
So yeah, Eric Larson, Ron Mars. And by the way, so this was a, it has a $6 price tag on it. They're all from the 50% off section. This was three bucks. Um, another one by Ron Mars, Green Lantern book. And yeah, they're kind of random issues, but whatever. Uh, Kurt Busiek. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Uh, another Ron Mars. Uh, these are probably going to be for monthly giveaways. I have to kind of double check what I have, but these are Gene Ha signed books for the adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix. Probably going to be part of my monthly giveaways. Um, Kurt Busiek. Kurt Busiek, Thunderbolts books. That makes sense. Uh, this is sweet. Mike Mignola. Cloak and Dagger book signed. How badass is that? Mark Wade. Steve Scrochi. Cool sinister cover. Uh, Marv Wolfman on a vigilante book. Yeah, so those are just like some of the books I'm going to have as the autograph books in there. I think there's some cool shit in there. None of them are like... Oh, sorry, I got a hair in my mouth. None of them are like, um, you know, ridiculous keys. That's gross. <laughs> so, I thought that was neat, you know, just some, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, it's that they have a huge friggin' deal with, with those advertisers is really what it is. Comic Toby, it's a good question. Yeah, I think some cool covers for sure. Um, you guys want to see some stuff I'm going to have and whatnot tonight? I just had stacks sitting here, so why not? Uh, gonna put in some Moon Knight books. Just ton of some cool stuff. Um, like I said, I'm gonna have some of the kind of just you know, sexy stuff. Not necessarily like super risque, but like some Deja Thoris. Uh, this is that first appearance of that new version of Supergirl right there. Don't really know if that's considered a first appearance, but hey, it's cool. Uh, first Valmont. Got the Decal Catwoman stripper cover, this Batman homage. They get better. Um, Hellions, love that. Philip Tan cover, more Deja, Lindsner, Perio. I have one of these I'll throw in there. Don't fall, don't slide. <laughs> one of these I'll throw in there the Gleason, first Ben Riley, um, Calypso, first Calypso. We're gonna have that. Another Moon Knight book. Spawn 9. First Mr. Knight. Or First Mr. Knight solo, depending on how you look at it. Uh, what is her name? Uh, Thundra? Daughter of the Hulk. First Tim Drake. So we're going to have some keys in there, too. I'm going to kind of call it, like, Sexy Keys or something. So, should be kind of fun. Yeah, Chasm, the, the Ben Riley villain character. Um, what not equals fillers? What do you mean, Robert DeVoe? What not equals fillers? Um, is it still hard to get approved to sell on whatnot? So, if, if you have any problems getting approved to sell on whatnot, hit me up through any of my contact channels. Um, I have a referral thing that I think can help both of us, and it should get you approved faster if you're trying to. I don't think it's hard anymore. I think they pretty much want everybody on there. I'll tell you, there are a ton of sellers on there. So the competition has gotten fiercer, which is why I'm doing my whatnot tonight at 10 p.m. Uh, that's a pretty loosey-goosey start time. But around 10 p.m., I'll go live tonight. So make sure you're following me. There's a link in the description below. You can get $10 off your first purchase if you follow me and make your first purchase with a new account. Um, or, you know, just follow me to hang out if you want to hang out tonight. But yeah, I'll be doing sexy covers more than just what I showed there. I have more stuff too. That's just kind of the stack I was creating. Um, some keys, um, mostly just to, the, you know, the, the big sexy cover thing I'm doing next week. Not everything came in yet that I'm running on that show. So I kind of wanted to do something, but I have to kind of augment it with some other stuff because, you know, I, I can't run a full sexy show. Next um, next Friday, which is the 15th, I'll be running a huge sexy show 
big slabs, um, risque, nude stuff, rare stuff, hard to find stuff, rare and hard to find mean the same thing. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. And then again, we are coming up on uh, the big mystery box giveaway kind of show. There will be keys. There will be fun stuff. Um, some stuff I've been saving up for like a year. I don't think I'm going to be able like to put it this way. I don't think I'm going to be able to do another mystery box show for like another year after this, not on the same level. Um, you know, everybody who buys a box, I think is going to walk away with like two, maybe three slabs and like 20 or 30 comic books, most of which will be signed exclusives, uh, variants, ratios, in demand books, some keys, um, that kind of stuff. So it should be a pretty fun show. I'm thinking that'll be like in a few weeks, probably. It's gonna take a lot of setup. I want to have everything ready to go. I want to double check all the, the rules and stuff that are kind of associated. Uh, hey, thanks a lot, Fright for the Horrible. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and if you do again, if you do have any issues and you're trying to figure that out, I'm more than happy to facilitate anything I can. Um, uh, so I have it affiliated. I've had it affiliated with my PayPal and a debit card directly or a bank account. Um, I think I think those all work. Um, so it depends on what you need it to be associated with. Um, you do have to have it associated with before you go into a show because basically as soon as you hit bid you're committing to buy something potentially so that's how they have it work that said i've had like one person have their payment fail and then they were able to figure it out in the middle of the show and they just they just got their item whatnot i will say like there's pros and cons right like there's there's definitely pros and cons um for the buyer side though as long as you're being careful with your prices i think it's a pretty good platform for buying um you know, especially if you're like in a show, you you know, you do that first thing where like you get your first book and it's like four bucks shipping or whatever. And then you like, you know, you get two or three additional books or a slab or something and you get that extra shipping for a dollar each item. That's pretty cool. That works out pretty well. Um, I like that. As a seller, it can be really risky, um, but you just got to make sure you're not setting your prices too low. You know, I set stuff and I'm like, I wish it would have went for more, but I also am comfortable with the price it went for. Uh, and I'm, I'm always happy with people when they get their deals. The only thing that's frustrating is, and this happened to me last Friday, is I started an auction and there's just these weird times where it's like there's other shows going on or whatever. And I had like eight items in a row not sell. And I was starting them all pretty low, I felt like. And I was just like, all right. And then like 11 p.m. rolled around, which is part of the reason I'm doing this tonight at this time. And people just started buying stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. It's just, it's just something you got to kind of hang with is, and not get... I guess, demoralized. Um, wow, cool. I actually see a couple new followers came through since we've been talking. So that's really awesome. I appreciate that uh, to both of you. Two, two people watching must have went and did that. Um, that's fantastic. And, and again, we are getting close. I, I'll mention this. We are, I, last time I looked, I was four subscribers away from 3,000 subs on YouTube, which is really awesome. That's been a goal of mine for a while. Um, when I get to 500 followers on whatnot, I will do a giveaway in my next show after that like a slab or something. So that'll be fun. Um, for, Hey, what's up? How's it going? Frog brawler. Welcome to the show. I uh, just did a whole bunch of unboxings for various things I've gotten in recently. I uh, was showing off what's going on in my whatnot auction tonight, talking about some channel updates and the other channel update I'll talk about. So you're kind of here fresh for this one. Um, I just had a brand new sponsor sign on for the show. So you'll see some ads um, on my videos for comic barricades. They're a brand new sponsor of the show. Welcome to the Bronze Age Nerd channel. I really appreciate the, the sponsorship, guys. That's awesome. Um, so you'll be seeing those ads run on all my videos uh, for a while now. That'll be really cool. And you'll also see a product demonstration uh, video that I'm going to do and a giveaway we're going to do where we're going to give some away to people. So I think that'll be really fun. So you guys get a chance to try them out, check them out. Uh, they're a cool product. I really think they are kind of filling a niche in the comic collecting hobby that I see, like especially a lot of stores, I can't believe how many stores I go to where like the comics are flopping around <laughs> in, the, in the, in the boxes. And it just makes me cringe because as careful as I am when I'm handling comic books, even the ones that aren't mine, even ones I'm not buying, I'm careful. I'm like, you know, moving the stack to the back, angling them so they don't flop, flop over at a violent rate of speed there. You wonder how many people aren't handling those correctly. Comic barricades snap into your box 
you they have little teeth on them you close the box around it and all of a sudden you have a rigid wall there so your box instead of like using fillers or whatever which is fine too by the way um, but instead of doing that you have like an actual barricade there um, it also is good for adding stability when you're stacking boxes up gives it kind of an extra extra layer of um of well stability i guess uh engineering into the bottom of the stack to make those those stacks a little bit more sturdy which is really cool um uh well so comic toby if you're doing it for a dollar selling books for a dollar on whatnot is fool's errand is a fool's errand um because you're going to get charged a 35 cent fee for every item you sell so all of a sudden you've only made 65 cents plus whatnot's going to take about 12 percent of your purchase total so all of a sudden you're making like 50 cents so i guess if you have a dime book and you're comfortable selling it for a dollar and making like 40 50 cents back uh i guess that's fine but then you got to factor in shipping costs too which they pay for shipping but you have to pay for the supplies to ship it right so if you're shipping in gemini's which you should be um yeah that that's kind of a problem so but it, it's it, you know if you're selling a hundred dollar book okay they took 35 cents off the top and they take 12 percent uh ish it, it's like they take nine percent and 2.9 percent so it's it's a little it's not a true 12 percent, but it's pretty close to it um so just something to consider something to keep in mind then on top of all that make sure you're keeping track of your taxes everybody remember you will get charged um ian anderson comes in and says just subbed i found your comic youtube pretty recently and you're quickly become one of my faves that's awesome thank you so much i really appreciate that uh that that's really fantastic you know i i i'll just kind of kind of kind of finish up here pretty soon i'll just kind of recap by saying like i i a comment like this really makes my day because I started doing this for, for a few different reasons. I've kind of talked about this before, but one of them was a creative outlet. Another one is, oh, I got to answer this real fast. When can I expect to make my first million on whatnot? Um, right after you pass Skeff and Comic Man Andy on the top whatnot sellers list. <laughs> Those guys are awesome. So um, <laughs> yeah, I know you're, I know you're joking. Um and it depends, I guess, on what you have. I mean, there's there's books selling for 30k on on whatnot, and there's there's auctions that are going crazy high. It just depends on on what you have. So, it you know that's that's the capping factor. Um, back to Ian's comment here. Yeah, so so <laughs> for sure. So I started doing this to to kind of have a creative outlet during the whole lockdown pandemic thing, like at the start of it. And I I've been wanting to do a YouTube channel for a while. I just couldn't nail down. Like I wanted to do like a general broad channel like movies video games comics and it, so i i kind of have i'm coming full circle on that because i'm kind of trying to get back to that a little bit but i was like you know comic books are something that i can talk about a lot there's a lot to talk about and at the time they were starting to heat up a lot and so i was like well why not talk about comic books for a while and then i i kind of took the angle of i'm going to start doing some submissions to the cgc what can I, you know, can I do some grade predictions uh, and then kind of follow the whole life cycle? Like, here's me submitting the comic books. Here's me getting the comic books back and the grades I got. And that's kind of how I started. And then there's a long wait in between there. So I'm like, wow, I got to do some other videos about some stuff. And I've kind of just kept going and going and going. And I got some good advice from Billy over at Economics and Comics that I kind of instinctively already knew a little bit, but he really kind of drove it home. Listen to your subscribers. Listen to what they want. Um, and then the thing that I just kind of kept doing the entire time is I didn't want to play YouTube games. I did not want to play any YouTube games at all. I didn't want to like suck up to other channels to try to like get their subscribers. I didn't want to, um, you know, like and sub all the time and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I wanted to respect you guys as viewers. I'm using guys in the generic sense, everybody who's viewing, I wanted to respect your opinions I wanted to respect your intelligence. I wanted to be completely honest with you. I wanted to be transparent with you. I never did this intending to get monetized and, you know, do YouTube videos for a living and stuff like that. I never did that. And I still approach things 
not really from a financial first perspective. I do occasionally, you know, factor in money decisions, but it's never the first thing I think about. Um, but, you know, I do, I'll, I'll, I spend a lot of time doing this. And at, at some point it has to be worthwhile to my family for the loss of time that they're not seeing me. Uh, it can't just be a hobby with, when you factor in filming, editing, pre-production, post-production, follow-up to comments, that stuff takes up a lot of time. Hey, yo, we got Dean in the house himself. What's up, man? Um, yeah, all is well for sure, brother. We were actually just talking about you earlier, talking about some of your whatnots. Um, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, you might be you might be lucky number three thousand. In fact, let me check. I can go check right now. Where are we at? We are at we're at three thousand guys. We're at three thousand subs right now. It just rolled over on my end. That's awesome. I was at 2996 right before I did the stream. Let me just go to my actual channel. Yeah, there it is. 3K subscribers. Holy crap. That's amazing. Uh, it's amazing to everybody in here. And if you're just watching like on the rewind, thanks for those that are subscribing. You know, like I said, I, I am, I'm doing this for you guys um, as much or more as I'm doing it for myself. It's a personal journey for me. I wanted to learn how to do editing. I wanted to learn how to do sound and lights and all that stuff. Um, social media, like I wanted to get better at that digital graphic design for like thumbnails. Um, so that's, that's just awesome. Uh, I'm really, really excited to just see that because, you know, again, I don't ask you guys to like, and subscribe. I don't, I've done a couple giveaways like, Hey, you know, just because that's kind of the thing to do. I've kind of intentionally moved away from that and I'm going to do monthly giveaways for my subscribers, my, my members. So if you become a channel member, um, at any level you get entered to win a giveaway and I'll do one at the end of the month in April. And if you're a channel member, you, you would just have a one out of however many chance to win that prize. I'm going to start out kind of modest, you know, like maybe some of these signed comic books I got, maybe some of these will go to a giveaway. You know, you might win like a Marv Wolfman vigilante comic book or something like that. Right. Um, but it's still, it's, it's a comic book that you get a chance to win for free and it's something from me. Right. Uh, and if you're one of my $10 a month channel members, you get a chance to win a bonus thing, a bonus comic book, a bonus card. You know, maybe it's a hologram venom card or something like that. I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't figured that out, but you're going to win a bonus prize. So I think that's really cool. Um, Uh, my channel I am trying to build without buying subscribers, like doing giveaways. Yeah, so I only did giveaways. I did a giveaway at, I think I did I did something called the Road to 500 um, because it just felt right. It felt like the right thing to do. And I had like this cool thing where it's like, the, the more subscribers I unlocked, I unlocked a new mystery book. And I thought that was kind of fun. So I did that. And then I did one. Um, one at like 700 or something, something kind of random, but it was more like, I just felt like, you know, I just felt like I needed to give back to the community is what it came down to. Um, but I don't think I've done any since then. So, you know, and I don't, I, I've, I've done. So recently I've done some collaborations where I've gone to some other channels and I said, Hey, my viewers are asking for this video. You know, Skeff came into my, my chat a couple of times and people were like, you guys should do a video together. Uh, two beards, one comic, right? Uh, and and so we did a video together. Um, you know, and I approached um, uh, Danny Girl Comics about doing a video together, uh, stuff like that. But I, I I generally don't like go to their channels and be like, we totally need to hook up and have our viewers meet each other. Like, that's just so artificial to me. There's just nothing um, organic about that. And I don't like that uh, unless it is like, unless it's something that comes about naturally or it makes sense, or if a channel asks me, if a channel asks me, I'm way more likely to say yes about doing something like, uh, like journos, um, has had me on uh, comic book. Canon had me on, um, stuff like that. I'm, I'm way more likely to say yes, because that's, that's different. That's like, you know, you got, you know, that person thinks that I'm somebody that needs to be on their channel for various reasons. And I, I've kind of taken those considerations one by one. There's a couple of channels I have said no to, purely because like I'm not familiar with them I don't know what they do and I'll probably you know if I like them I check them out I'll probably end up saying like yeah yeah totally we should we should do something together um 
Hey, right on, man. That's cool. Definitely go check out, uh, tap, uh, type in your username because it's, it's what DW Metzgar. Um, I know it's not probably pronounced that way, but that's, that's what it looks like. But type that into chat so people know what, know what to do, dude. Uh, thanks a lot, Frog Brawler. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll kind of, kind of give it up here. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I should have you, what your next comment here. I should have realized that because you've been you've been a viewer for a long time for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's hot. I mean, just for for right here, it's what it's. Um, I'm in Washington and it is currently 78, which is pretty hot for April here. Nice, dude. Yeah, Matt, you've been around for a while for sure. Got Rico's Comics Revenge in here. Oh, dude, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like people, yeah, people love it when I do rant videos. But my rant videos are different. They're just they're, they're serious, but I very rarely, very rarely yell. Um... <laughs> For sure, yeah, not hiding. Oh gosh, yeah, wow, that that's amazing. I mean. It's just crazy. Like I'm like I never managed to wrap my head around the fact that like I could get to a thousand subscribers. And then I was like, well, if I continue this pace, it's gonna happen. Like it's because I got to like seven or eight hundred. And once I got to seven or eight hundred, I'm like, it's just gonna happen. Like there's no way it's just like I'm just gonna stop unless I stop improving. And that's one thing I try to do, by the way. Every recorded video I make, I try to improve something every video I make. That's one of the things I believe in. And that might be like tightening up my edits it might be like tweaking my sound it might be coming up with a concept that's more coherent or digestible for my viewers whatever that is um and that's a big thing i believe in but but you know once i got to a thousand i was like geez this this is really happening like i'm gonna get monetized and then it was like watch hours i had to get to watch hours and i was like well i i guess i should hit that that goal because if i'm gonna be doing this it, i may as well get paid for doing it um, but part of that decision was very much like, I'm never going to sell my soul for YouTube. And I, that sounds silly to some people probably, but there are a lot of YouTubers, especially outside of comic books, but even in comic books that are pretty fake, they're pretty focused on just getting money, just getting views, just getting clicks. And yeah, I totally... You know, somebody left a comment re recently on one of my videos like, this is clickbait. And I get what they're saying. I don't think it's clickbait because the, the thumbnail talked about something I talked about in the video. I I think part of YouTube is you have to make engaging thumbnails that people want to click. Um, I try to like keep that in control. But yeah, you, you do kind of have to play the game a little bit. Um, but I try not to play the game a lot. <laughs> uh, it's a very fine balancing act because I just... I want to be able to like wake up every day, put out a video when I put out a video and not feel like it's all for money. Again, money does factor into things I do. Financial considerations have to be made. Comics are expensive. Supplies are expensive. Subscription services I use like um, cover price, you know, uh, stream yard, those things add up. They're, they're very real considerations. My time is valuable. Um, but I, I never make it my first consideration. Like when a, when a sponsor approaches me, uh, like Comic Barricades approached me and said, um, you know, hey, I'd, I'd like to be interested in, in having you do uh, doing promotions for our product. I said, hey, you know, I don't I haven't used your product. I don't know if it's a good product. Um, and I won't kind of get into details from there because that was all kind of private stuff. But but I used the product. I felt like strong enough in the product. I was like, yeah, I can advertise it for you. Every product I talk about doesn't necessarily mean that I think it's like my number one best product of all time that I'm going to buy stock in the company once they go public or whatever. But it does mean that I believe it's a good product. I believe it's not snake oil. I believe it's like, you know, something that people will be interested in, something that my viewers will be interested in. If it's not that first, I'm not going to do it. And that comes to the kind of videos I make. Like I'm, I'll listen to what you, if you guys tell me you want certain kinds of videos from me, sure. I'll do those like, you know, within reason. Like if you guys are like, I only want you to do topless hot tub streams. I'm like, well, nobody wants to see that. All right. Nobody wants to see that except for you. I get it. 
I get it, but <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm not going to sacrifice like what I believe in. But if you guys are like, hey, I want more videos like this that are related to something you do. Sure. That's actually a good question for you guys. What kind of videos do you guys want to see me do? Like, what do you want more of? Um, you know, I, I'm going to keep doing the top five not to buy. I'm going to keep doing the, the top five not to buy three months later. The FOMO price checks. What else do you want? Let me know. Um, comic book and whiskey site. And I, I know I saw your question. But it looks like you got it answered. And I'm sorry it's hot over there, Pete. That's bullshit. I'm hoping we have a nice cool summer, but it's not looking good. Uh, comic book and whiskey site. It's interesting. I have kind of developed a taste for bourbon. And I saw you got your silver button question answered. Um, it's crazy too when you think about it. So 100,000. Think about like the kind of channels like my channel, which is is sort of more on the comic book collecting side than it is like the comic book fan side. Think about how few channels are really over 100,000. There's on the comic collecting side, there's what, Gem Mint. There's probably more. I can't think of it out of my head, but like, you know, Reggie Collects, Journos, uh, Comic Tom, Mint Hunter. Um, you know, I'm not trying to intentionally leave anybody out, but all those big ones out there, the, most of them are, you know, economics and comics. Uh, they're around like, five to 15,000 ish comic Tom's higher than that. I don't know what he's at. Um, anyways, the point is it's just ridiculous. We're not a, we're a very niche community. If you get to things like comic book fandom, comic book collecting, um, like, like comic book readers, things like, you know, um, comic tropes, um, comics explained that kind of stuff. You get to a, a higher number for sure. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, so Moco hundred dollar Batman Hall of Foil. Okay. Why are you speaking on on modern incentives? Just curious. Hey Matt, thanks a lot, man. Topless hot dog. <laughs> shit. All I had to do was mention topless topless bronze, and I got a super chat. No, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, once I see your beard die, then I know you've sold out. That's funny. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, thank you, man. That, mean, that, that means a ton to me. I uh, just went full-time in Pokemon YouTubing, and he has a similar attitude to you. Being genuine on YouTube is totally possible. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the other thing I think of when I think about this, Ian... And I do think about this, not like a ton, but I do think about it. Is I mean, just pretend like it it's it's the right way to do it. Like pretend like your goal is to build this huge audience or whatever. What what's better? Like quick tricks that'll build like a quick audience, or like in investing time, investing my time and energy into you guys. So some of you want to invest that time and energy into me. Well, you're going to like follow me for, for longer. You're going to watch more. You're going to care more if we have that relationship. Um, and someday we'll get to the hot tub. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, he's got a, he's got a crazy Batman run guys. Um, The cute lady that sells comics. Which which one? I think there's a few of those. Uh, I think people want more detailed information on the comic book character and not just, this book has a first appearance. That's why comics explain your casual comics. I, well, I think you're partially correct, Frightfully Horrible, but I, I think it's really more that like, most of those people I think that are watching that video, I think it's the same percentage of the audience or the same part of the audience that watches like, again, like the, the bigger channels, the, the economics and comics, the journos, those guys. Um, they're watching those videos too, probably for the most part. You know, you guys are probably watching some of those videos, right? 
But there's also a ton of people that don't collect and speculate and invest and, and all that kind of stuff that are also watching the video because they're like, hey, they mentioned this character in this run of comic books or, hey, I read this comic book when I was a kid and I want to check it out. Or they want information. And those informational channels are very popular. I've thought about when I when I can upgrade my camera and I can upgrade, you know, to have kind of a really polished kind of studio look, have a dedicated recording space. You know, this is my living room over here my daughter's toys and stuff this is my dining room that is too small to really be a dining room anyway this is a ridiculously small townhouse apartment but this is my dining room there's a microwave right here i'm tapping right now there's a coffee maker with a printer on top of the microwave and this is my small desk that has a light on it and a camera and a mic all attached to it and i put shit on the walls behind me to make it look like this is a room if I have a more dedicated space, if I have a more dedicated time to do that, I want, kind of want to do some of that content. A lot more like retrospectives and ex comics explained type content. Ret comic Tropes is one of my heroes on YouTube. I'd love to do that kind of stuff. So, um, But yeah, I, I agree partially with what you're saying, but I also think there's more to it. Yeah, people are specking on Momo, man. It's funny. I just did a, a uh, three months later about the Momo Eternals number seven, one in 50. And boy, that was a shit show. Um, hot tubs and comics don't mix. Or do they? No, they don't mix. You're right. Unless you're doing... Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say that. It's the humidity chamber for sure. All right, guys. Well, I'm probably going to bounce off soon. But I am curious. You know, the, the more types of videos you guys want to see me do, um, for sure, hit me up about those video ideas. You know, I do want to take your guys' suggestions seriously. Um, the channel memberships, you still have time to get in on the channel membership for this month to get the prize wrong at the end of the month. If you're a $10 a month channel member, or if you're $10 on Kofi, if you do the Kofi $10 a month membership, either way, I don't care. Just message me and I'll, I'll make sure you get in the drawing and you can win a free comic book. I have a new sponsor coming to the channel that I'm extremely excited about. That's a really fun partnership. I uh, can't wait to talk more about comic barricades in the coming weeks and months. That'll be really exciting. I'll show you guys a demonstration video. I'll do a giveaway so some of you guys can try out Comic Barricades. Um, I do have a whatnot show going on tonight at 10 p.m. Pacific time. It'll be 1 a.m. Eastern, so it's more for the night owls, and it's more for us West Coasters. Um, let's see what I mix, missed here. Um, this is in my guest house. Um, my car? <laughs> <laughs> um oh it's i it's totally that she if you look at the covers where she clearly had more time to work on them some of her stuff's not bad there's even been a couple covers i've liked of hers but when she just does like this sketch style it's almost like a convention sketch like here's a headshot here's some watercolors on it boom we're done like a little fucking thing behind the character that that's not very good. Um, she needs to like, you know, draw more full characters, take more time. Like some of her stuff can be okay if, if she takes time, but she just doesn't. And that's probably not her fault. It's because she's being commissioned to do what, like a hundred covers a month or something. It's ridiculous. Hot tube comic and bourbon that we could call it. We could call it hot tube, hot tube and bourbon, Kentucky hot tube. I don't know. We'll work on the idea. Um, yeah, true. Neither, neither can I, um, <laughs> absolutely. That's true. Oh, fuck dude. Have, so am I the only one that's ever had like fantasies about what it would be like to go back in time just for 10 minutes and like shop at a comic? Like for me, I was like thinking about shopping at my childhood LCS. If I could just go back in time 30 years, like Almost like those old game shows where they like would have the kids at the end like run around and grab all the shit and try to get the most expensive cart. I'm like, what what kind of stuff could I grab that would be like the most expensive, like cool investment run? I've had so many day fantasies about that shit. It's like, man, what would it be like grabbing like 10 ASM 300s for like probably five or 10 bucks each or whatever, you know, just like, man man get some new mutants 98 batman adventures 12 
Um, I'm and I'm, you know, the, you could definitely grab some older shit too that they probably had, but I'm thinking like, what would they definitely have had and probably had like mini copies of because those were highly ordered comic books. Oof. Can't even imagine. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and, but but the amount of times too that I've seen like on Reddit, like somebody who's like, I was going through my grandfather's comics and they pull out an X Men one or an AF fifteen or whatever. It's just it's just amazing. <laughs> no, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about it. Um, mostly because I'm not Calvin Klein. That's that's the biggest thing. Um. Just not pink socks and bourbon. That's funny. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's where the real rarity of, of those Silver Age comics and stuff comes into play, man. It's just, it's absolutely, you know, it's funny. Like, people talk about how we preserve comic books. It's like, comic books were designed as a disposable product. I mean, no one expected anybody to keep a magazine or a comic book or any that kind of stuff for almost a hundred years, but now they do. And then Marvel took a step backwards and was like, Hey, let's start printing comic books. Like they're designed to be disposable again. Don't know what the hell's going on there. Uh, so I got some stuff going on on my phone here. I need to address. I was supposed to be a short stream. I'm going to kind of cut it short. Uh, that's a joke because I've been going for a while now. Um, but if you guys do have any questions, toss them my way. Thank you so much for everybody. who will help me, help me be part of that 3000 subscribers. That I have now. Um, that, that didn't make any sense. Thank you so for, so much for being one of my three thousand subscribers and getting me to that landmark. That's really exciting. That's that's a really positive start to the weekend. Uh, like I mentioned, I will be out of town for the weekend, um, dealing with some family issues that cropped up that are kind of on the bad side of things, unfortunately. But hopefully, we'll um, make the most of it in the best possible ways we can. And uh, yeah, so so hopefully that'll go well. And I will be on Whatnot tonight, probably around 10 p.m. It's kind of a loosey-goosey start time. So if you want to come check that out, that's cool. Yeah, man. Fuck, I can't even think about that. that yeah, 100%. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody help. Just, you know, just came on to unbox some comic books and show off some stuff. And um, hey, here we are. It's, it's really been a great time. Thanks for being a part of this, everybody. If you're watching on the Rewind, thank you so much for being part of this as well. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, maybe we'll do something fun. We'll see. We'll see. All right, guys, have a great one and I will catch you later. Uh, just remember as always read comics every day. Have a good one.